Okay, can everyone see it okay? Perfect. So as Professor Wren mentioned, my project is Independent Filmmaking in the Digital Age. I'm Jacob Ribby, my sponsor is Jeffrey Long, and my major is Film Business and Production. So my project, the goal for my project was to combine the art of independent filmmaking with business practices to increase the quality of the final product and reduce cost while keeping in mind crew and set safety while on the production. I hope to answer the question, what is the future of independent filmmaking? So a little bit of background about me. Over the past three years, I have worked on a variety of commercial productions. I have done over half a dozen short films with the American Film Institute in a variety of roles, such as assistant camera, assistant direction, director, production coordinator, production assistant. Um, so I have gotten to dabble in a little bit of everything through this experience. For those of you who aren't familiar with the American Film Institute, they are arguably the best film school in the world. And they're just a master's program. They specialize in film, no other departments or anything like that. So most of the people who go there are professionals in the field who are going back to further their education to hone in their career and their skills. Um, I've also had the pleasure of getting to work on commercial content for brands such as Porsche, Bell Helmets, and Big Firth Drumsticks, along with music um, promotion for people such as Alessia Cara and Sony Music. One of the cool things about working on various projects is while some of them have major budgets and large crew, a lot of them are actually more in the more digital, modern streaming age of digital content for Instagram and different social media platforms, kind of like what Jet talked about. So these crews are typically smaller, five to 10 people sometimes, and they're using um, smaller budget gear, such as mirrorless cameras and stuff that's more affordable to independent filmmakers. So I wanted to see how could I take a commercial production that I worked on or the, the concept behind it for efficient practice on productions and take a one to three day shoot and scale that onto a feature film that could take several weeks or even months, depending on the project. So, skip the slide. Nope, too far. <laughs> Sorry about the little hang up. Okay, yes, this is where we were. So a little market segmentation for um, the video streaming industry in 2020, the video streaming industry was grossed $50 billion globally. And that's projected to grow at a rate of roughly 20% over the next decade. Um, a little bit of revised percentages, Netflix currently holds about 20% of that 50 billion in revenue for 2020, and Amazon is close behind with 16%. Um, one thing you'll note is if you see the 51% on the right-hand side that says other, while that can include some companies such as Disney or HBO Max, it also gives way for plenty of independent video distribution and video streaming platforms that specialize in working with independent filmmakers like myself, which is the target audience that I would be working for. So the process for my project and my story. Humans are storytelling creatures and it's in our nature to tell stories, whether it's to friends, family, or the general audience of the world on a global platform. I like to tell stories that I feel are real world, that have real world issues or morals to try and like help spread, you know, thoughts and just make people feel like we're not alone in processes in life. Um, so the first step in my process with writing stories is to come up with a list of captivating ideas and look at interactions between people. Once I found a story that I thought would be good to try and spread onto others, I started to just focus on if I were to make this film, which I'm planning on doing um, after I graduate, is the production side of it. I wanted to focus on use, utilizing gear owned by me or friends or crew, um, crew I've worked with, such as 
mirrorless cameras, which can record now in four or 6K, which are industry standards for even high budget productions, along with lightweight LED lighting and focusing on like what kind of locations, scenery, props are available to me. So I can cut back the stress and production cost of the film by looking at what resources are accessible to me and how I can utilize that to create a better story. Distribution. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about a few different options later on in my presentation, but distribution is the next step. Once the film is done, you're gonna wanna try and sell it or try and get some kind of licensing deal with a distributor to try and get it on the final step, streaming platforms. I am certain everybody on this chat has seen some kind of streaming content in the past week, whether it's a homemade YouTube video on their phone or the latest blockbuster movie on their TV, streaming has just become a part of our daily lives. And that is where heavy focus should lie on the future of independent filmmakers. So the story I wrote, it's called Little Moments and the story looks at how life can change in an instant. It's the little moments that make up the bigger picture of what we call life. So um, the picture is a screenshot of the first section of my script. It's about a husband and wife. Um, Aaron, the husband, gets to his desk one day at work and there's a note on his door or on his desk. He has a notice of termination of employment and he finds out that he's getting laid off. Unfortunately, at the same time, his wife, Rachel, is getting the news that she's pregnant. So before long, Aaron will be out of a job and they'll both be parents. So it starts to kind of kick off this spiral of how do people interact with issues in life, even when things don't go well, and how even if you think something is locked in and certain and everything is going well, that this idea of like a fairy tale story isn't necessarily all it's cracked up to be. So for setting, I wanted to set the film in New York State uh, for a couple of reasons. First off, Aaron grew up in a rural town, so he has grown up with the values of like a more slow paced life and he just enjoys having more space between things and not always having constant noise around him. His wife, Rachel, is the polar opposite. She grew up in New York City and is used to having the energetic nightlife where something entertaining is going on everywhere you go. Everywhere you look, there's something happening. So I thought it'd be interesting to see that with these rapid changes throughout their lives, in their personal lives and in their relationship and outside conflict, how they would be able to manage the connection between these two different upbringings. Another reason besides thinking that New York would be a great setting for these two characters to have it actually placed in New York is that uh, New York State has a production incentive to try and grow the film industry where productions can get back 25% of their production cost if they meet the requirements for this initiative. And while that may not be an option for self-funded independent films that cost a few thousand dollars, ultra low budget films that cost at least a quarter million dollars and meet the requirements can get this reimbursement. Um, by comparison, the average cost of a motion picture in 2020 was $75 million. So 250,000 is a very low budget film. And California has incentives to keep film too, but they focus more on tax credits as opposed to the overall production cost. So the cost of housing and transportation for the principal crew that would have to stay in New York that would be flown from LA, Atlanta, other parts of the world um, would be greatly less than the amount that would be reimbursed through the initiative. So budgets, looking at the budgets, I'm gonna start on the left-hand side with what I'm calling the backyard budget. A backyard budget is a crew that consists mainly of the department heads. So you have like a director of photography, director, producer, et cetera. And then three general PAs is what I went off of. And PAs are production assistants who kind of dabble a little bit and help out with whatever's needed on set. Um, with base pay, the, the budget comes out to $68,000. 
And what that means is everyone on the cast and crew is getting paid $200 a day. And there is minimal cost for locations, gear rentals, props, et cetera, because we're trying to focus on utilizing what is accessible to us for free. So for example, if I wanted to film the movie at my house, then I wouldn't have to pay rental fees. There would still be some permit fees, but it would greatly cut down the cost of the production. The deferred pay would cut the budget down to just over $18,000. And what deferred pay is, it's a common it's a common thing in the film industry is if and when the film becomes profitable, the crew would be paid. So then the budget would go up to the $68,000 price tag if that's what was agreed on by the cast and crew. But a lot of filmmakers, especially independent filmmakers, or those who are looking to get experience under their belt or get more credits to their name, or who, someone who is very experienced but just really believes in a project and is passionate about what the film is saying, is willing to work for deferred pay in hopes of the film making a profit. So if you look on the right-hand side, in contrast, if we were to make this film an ultra-low budget union project, which would bump the crew from eight to 10 up to around 35, the eight to 10 was the backyard budget crew size and the 35 would be union, then the cost of the film would be just around $791,000. While that's a major price jump, that is still greatly lower than an estimated $9 million, which is what the film would cost if it was put on by a major studio with more notable names behind it. So one of the other things for the reason for the major price jump in Union is now we're beginning to look at expensive gear rentals. So camera packages alone would be a couple thousand dollars a day and locations, permits, and all kinds of other gear all are combined into that $791,000. So let's say that you got someone to help invest in your film and you did one of the backyard budgets. You got $68,000 to make this movie. What's the next step once it's either being produced or it's in post-production or it's already completed and you want to show the world what you've created. So there's a few there's a few examples I put up here. There's numerous options for independent filmmakers, but the first one I'm going to talk about is Gravitas Ventures, which is a an independent video distribution service for getting independent films onto streaming platforms. The way I found out about this company was through a film I saw in 2019 called Cosmos. It was a sci-fi film about alien contact and it was an entire cast and crew of seven people with a budget of just around $6,000. And this film through the dedication of the crew involved was able to include CGI and a bunch of other tactics that higher budget films would have. Um, through their, through the team of Cosmos production and deal contract with Gravitas Ventures, they were able to land a global distribution with Amazon Prime Video. The next um, avenue I'm going to talk about is a place called Film Freeway. Film Freeway is a website um, where you can submit your film to film festivals, hundreds of film festivals across the world. And entry fees for your film can range from free. Um, there are some student discounts for certain festivals, but the average festival ranges around $40 to $50 per entry. While this could add up over a couple dozen entries to different festivals, it's a great opportunity for filmmakers to try and get their film in front of an audience. And a lot of film festivals play in movie theaters, so they get to premiere in a theater. Um, one of the cool things about Film Freeway is that the audience, you don't know who's in the audience. There could be potential buyers or producers or people who would want to collaborate on future projects. But regardless, even if those people aren't there or aren't interested in your film, there's going to be a general viewing audience that will talk about your film to their friends and start building a name recognition for you as a filmmaker. The last topic I, or the last avenue I want to talk about in this presentation is a site like Vimeo. You can put it out yourself and while you may not be able to 
retire off the income from the film because it wouldn't be um, a very high payout. At least you can show people, whether it's future filmmakers or people you want to collaborate with, buyers for your film, you can say, look at what I can do. This is what I'm capable of. This is what my storytelling looks like. So Vimeo is a great option for people to put their films out just to say, this is what I am capable of doing. One of my favorite examples of this form of creative, low-budget, independent filmmaking is from a film colleague of mine. Wait for it to come up. So, oh, too far. Is Freddie McDonald. Um, at the age of 17, Freddie McDonald made a short film called So Torn, and he looked at what he had available to him. He had a $600 mirrorless camera, kind of like what I talked about earlier that um, shot in 4K. And he lived nearby a wooded area with a really cool country back road type of street and said, okay, with this gear and with these given circumstances and with a minimal crew, what kind of story can I tell? What captivating, what can I do to captivate the audience? So with a minimal crew, the final short film didn't have any dialogue, just audio and visual or just sound effects and visual. He was able to tell a captivating short film that was um, picked up by 20th Century Fox and was shown in Arclight theaters. I talked to Freddie about what he felt this film stood for in the future of independent filmmaking and low budget filmmaking. And he said that he believes that this stands for the fact that as long as you are devoted to your craft and you have the passion for it, that your imagination is what is the boundaries for opportunities in filmmaking, that you are no longer constrained to having to pay millions of dollars to make a captivating story that will be beloved by millions. And I think that's a really motivating and uplifting view for the future of filmmaking and hope to see that future. I would like to acknowledge the people who inspire me to create. First off, my parents, Lisa and Jeff Rippey, along the, with the rest of my family, some set friends, Luke Boley, Alex Oje, Jess Hess, Freddie McDonald, Corey Auer, Mikel Denis, Patty McCarthy, and all the cast and crew I have had the pleasure of working with. Thank you for listening to my presentation today, and I hope you enjoyed.